Alrighty, there we are. Ano mise, oishikatta? Bonyari shite itara, tonari o aruku oba sama ga tozen koe o kakete kita. Ah, hai. Sakki lunch o tabete kita o mise no koto daro. Watashi wa shoujiki ni unazuita. Sasuga ni shita ga koe te iru dake atte, oba sama ya renji no sou yu mekiki wa shinrai shite ita. たまに新しい食への探求心からなのかショッキングな味に出会わされることもあるけど他にもいろいろと紹介したいけどケーキとか甘いのでも胃に入らないことにはどうしようもないかさすがにもう入りませんランチと食後のお茶を別の店でという少々お腹にとっての強行軍である自然と歩幅もゆっくりだった取るのも困るしまあそれが一番ですが<笑>今日は思えば初めておばさまと一緒にこの町を歩いていた千尋先輩との会話でちょっと楽になったからそれにもうすぐ私がこの町にいられる時間も終わってしまうからふととあるお店が目についた久世さんがバイオリンを修理に出すために使ったお店壊れちゃっててね今は弾けないんだ出会った時に告げられた言葉あの壊れたというのは自分に対しての言葉だったのだろう<笑>本当に嘘ばっかり何<笑>いいえ何でもありません首を振ってまっすぐ顔を上げる人混みの中で何かが目についた何だろうと思って目を凝らすと学生服の後ろ姿レンジが遠くに見えた私たちはゆっくりとショーウィンドウを覗き込みながら歩いていたのですぐに彼の姿は消えてしまうおばさまに目をやると、うん、彼女はレンジに気づいていないようだったそうだね私は微笑むここはレンジが毎日通っている道晴れの日も雨の日も雪の日も世界の終点へと続く道おばさまはレンジが千尋先輩と付き合うことに反対しますか自分でも残酷な質問かと思ったがそれでも聞きたかったおばさまは私を一別して曖昧な笑みを浮かべた<笑>大人になったのかなえ返答が理解できなかったセミが脱皮するのを見たことある全く違う方向から手が伸びてくるありますそれは理科の観察実験だったろうかいや家の軒先にいた幼虫を見つけて一晩中ずっと懐中電灯を当てて見ていたのだったかほら見てごらん誰かが指さしたお母さんだったろうかお父さんだったっけそう夜更かしできる夏だからこそそれを目にする羽まで透けた純白の柔らかそうなかそして抜け殻が残るセミよりはさなぎから蝶になるって言った方が綺麗かな<笑>女の子って急に変わるのね私のことですかええ今までのみずきちゃんはそういう質問を口にしなかったからそうでしたっけそうよ熱い日差しがショーウィンドウに反射してきらめく赤い町が揺らぐレンジがどうするかは私が何か言うつもりはないかな<笑> Hey Beatrice, how you doing? <笑>いいん
ですかもう千尋ちゃんの障害も知り得ているだろう<笑>ケブンはい<笑> Oh, things, hope things are going well, my dude. <laughs> yeah, it's just me. That's it. I know I'm going to say t h e s I'm going to say that. 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 自分が親になったら絶対にそういうこと言わないって決めてたしなりたいものになればいいわこれって親バカだと思うあいえいえ私は慌てて首を振る多分私のお母さんもそう思っているのだろうこの人たちは姉妹だからどこかケイ先輩と千尋先輩の関係にも近い気がしたでもレンジはこれから本当に痛い目に遭うでしょうね。Oh no! Oh! I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope it will get better in time. Just take it easy, you know, baby steps. Take care of yourself.、Um, don't forget to hydrate and eat good meals. Even if you might not feel hungry, it's very important. I'm sure you know all these things. But yeah, hopefully the doctor can help tomorrow too. I'm sorry to hear that. Kitta, Kane, Marude, so not the Hoshi to you, Kuchode. Waga Konagara, Shinji Larena, Kurai, Baka da Kara. Saikakuni, Shima Kutterushi. Jibun de Morenji no Koto, Boko Boko ni Tere Kigastakedo. やはり実の親には勝てないと思った夕飯の支度があるからとおばさまは先に家路に着いたおおおおめん、that doesn't sound nice I'm really sorry yeah I hate fevers too I hate the, the way in which they completely disable me and render me useless. I, I do not like feeling useless and unable to do things. I'm going to go to the sea. 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 I'm going to go to Yep. I'm right there with you. Yeah, that's right. Oh, <laughs> I don't know how much I can help, but I would gladly be your background noise for tonight. Eki de Shose t o y o n d e o Whatever you want to call it. Yapari Arewa, Kasan to Mizuki da Tanoka. Kizui de Koyo Kakena Katanone, Antawa. Ma. 彼はごまかすように勢いよくシャボン玉を吹いた<笑>エクリントン<笑>油膜がキラキラと虹色に輝くそれどうしたの商店街で見つけたんだ懐かしくてつい買っちゃった千尋にも一つあげたけど水木もいる<笑>いらないなんで千尋先輩を置いてこんなところにいるの僕の書いた小説を読んでもらってるんだレンジが育ちの良い笑みを浮かべる、oh. Hell yes. 内容がちょっとあれで一緒にいない方がいいかなって I 
です、ね、昨日ようやく新しいのが書き上がってさ25日までに間に合ってよかったよ。What's on the 25th? 小説っていつの間に書いてたの<笑>いつってずっと書いてたけどなんでテスト勉強はどうしたのよそれもしてたから大変だったんじゃないか。うわぁ、こいつ、そんなことしてて私の相手をしてくれなかったのか。<笑>本当に不器用。If, if I can be that for you, I'm happy to provide my dude. でも、彼に好かれる人は幸せなのかもしれない。それはあなたです。千尋先輩。ねえ、レンジってさ。うん。千尋先輩のことを考えながら。したことある何を<笑>えっと言いにくいな。したいたしたなんて言えばいいんだうーん。さして。え<笑>うわ<っ><笑>ああ、わかりやすく方をわからめる。何それねいじめいじめなの<笑>結構真剣だったりいなかったり。どっちうん、どっち真剣。そうか。シャボン玉を吹いて、レンジは考えあぐねるように間を置く。ああ、やっぱりあるんだ。なくはないというかそ,そっか恥ずかしいならするなよそんな質問<笑>赤くなってお互いに視線をそらしてしまうレンジは海を私は町をあの日大人になりたいと思った視線をそのままにレンジが遠い目をしてつぶやいた心の底から背筋を伸ばした大人になりたいって思ったよそうしたら大人ってなんだろうって疑問にぶつかって<笑>誰かに何かを与えられる人こういう大人になりたいなってそう誰かに思ってもらえる強さを持っている人それが大人だろうって思った不思議と首の裏側が熱くなったそろそろ読み終わる頃かなどんな小説を書いたの半年前のことを書いたえな,なんでずっと考えてたからレンジは私の顔を見て頬を描くとふーっと三つのシャボン玉を高く飛ばした千尋が忘れてしまうなら僕がそれを形にすればいいんだって一ヶ月分の内容だけど二時間くらいで読めると思うそうやって彼女にとって大切なことを僕が残してやればいいんだそれしかないなって空に消えていくシャボン玉の行方を追いながらレンジがうなずく父さんと母さんにも千尋のことを説明した自分の力だけで何とかしようなんてうぬぼれる必要はないからね一番に考えなきゃいけないのは彼女を大切にすることでそれにはきちんとしないといけないからもちろん全部彼女が答えてくれるならの話だけどあの小説を読んで半年前雪のように消えてしまったあの子を今の千尋が幸せにしてやりたいって。そう思ってくれるといいな<笑>やっぱり好きだからね<笑>心配しなくていいよ覚悟はしてるレンジが私を気遣って優しく言う笑いながら手を握ったり開いたりしていた緊張してるできる限りのことは書いた自分でもよくできたと思う嘘もついてない
それでもダメなら諦めるの<笑>また書くしかないよね<笑>彼はグッと拳を握りしめて何気ないように続ける努力はしたけどそれが見合わないなら力が足りないか頑張る方向が間違ってるんだろうねゆっくりとでいいよもう焦らない僕は天才じゃないし不器用だからでも人の心を打つ作品ってそうやって真剣に向き合ってこそ生まれるんだろうなっていろいろと考えたんだけどどうかな自信なさげなところがなければいいのに私は笑ってしまったそれ誰の言葉何の本に書いてあったのどこにも書いてないよえ僕の言葉だよ、うん、そして二人で駅へと向かう町は夕暮れ門限をとっくに過ぎている気もしたが私も結末を見届けたかった<笑>レンジはさすがに緊張を隠せる状態ではないらしくずっと黙っている千尋先輩はあの時のことを知っているそれを伝えようかと思ったが言っちゃダメだねと私も口を閉じて歩いていたどうする私も中に入っていいのえああそうだなえどうしようかレンジがおどおどと考え込み海での言葉や仕草がかっこよかったからてっきり即答されると思ったのに思わずじとめになってしまうあんた何ためらってるのよ<笑>いやあーなんか緊張してきちゃって、like, もじもじと What else would you expect? I would 面白くないとかいきなりで嫌がられたら最悪だよな<笑>あまだ読み終わってなかったらどうしようか最後の場面読んでる時に顔出しちゃうとまずいよね I, I identify with that amount of overthinking I feel it on a spiritual level なんか僕ってそういう間の悪さとかありそうじゃないはああかん<笑>思わず脳内大阪弁でうめいてしまうこいつやっぱり麻生レンジなんだ<笑>大丈夫なるときにはなるようにしかならないからそれってダメなんじゃ、yeah. 泣きそうな顔でレンジがつぶやく不思議そうに通りすがりの方々がこちらを注目していた<笑>ついていってあげるからため息をついて私は子供を歯医者に連れていくような気分で駅に入った<笑>舞台は再び駅へと戻った彼と彼女の出会いの場へと両手で顔を覆いながら千尋先輩はベンチに座っていた飛び立ち損ねた鳥のようだとレンジがいつか形容していたことを思い出すいつも彼女は空を見上げていて世界の終点に一人<笑>町の喧騒が遠のくレンジと私の足音が響いて千尋先輩が顔を上げた<笑>泣き晴らしていたのか真っ赤な瞳で私をいやレンジを見て彼女はゆっゆっくりと立ち上がった<笑>一瞬のためらいどっちだ<笑>千尋先輩が首を振るレンジが立ち止まったなんて中途半端な距離なのだろうもっと近づいてあげればいいのにで<笑>強く耳打ちしようとしてその顔を見上げて私は声を失ったレンジが夕暮れの中で笑っている
私は思わず後ずさってしまった鼓動が早い男の子の男の人のあまりにもまっすぐな笑みその厳しさが嬉しくてバカだけどそれが自分に人かけらも向いていないことが寂しくて千尋先輩は手を伸ばしかけてそれを折りたたんで胸に当てる飛べない鳥にたった一言でいいから祈りを力をどうかお与えください好きだよ二<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>枚の羽が舞うゆっくりと腕は伸ばされ千尋先輩がよろめきながら足を踏み出した。二人が抱き合うもう二度とお互いを離さないようにきれいなとてもきれいな私の視界はにじんでそんなきれいな光景を見ていられなくて足音を立てないようにゆっゆっくりと駅を出た町はすっかり夜に沈んだ<笑> That was so beautiful Remember how she was saying last time that maybe it would have been better if Uh, Mizuki and Renji would have been together and she would be the one for Kuze-san, hypothetically. And from a logical standpoint, yes, sure, maybe you can make... Uh, you can ga gather arguments and um, put forward the hypothesis that that's the way things would be more efficient and clean and stuff. This was beautiful, and to me that was perfect. And in that hypothetical scenario, something like this would never have happened. That would have been a big shame. So, yeah, I like this. I like this very much. Sorry, I'm sorry. 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 レンジはささやかな抵抗なのか何も言わないねえこの人たちどうして1時間も駅から出てこなかったのとか冗談はともかくいいんですよいっそ帰ってしまった方がいいかと思ったがなんとなく帰りそびれてしまっただけだからおめでとうございます<笑>ありがとうございますものすごく小さな声で千尋先輩がうつむくそれが答え手ぐらい握り合っていてもいいのに二人ともお互いの距離感がうまくつかめないように立っているとりあえず帰ろうレンジがぶっきらぼうに言う私は頭を抱えたくなった送っていきなさいってば耳元でささやく<笑>えああそっかそうだねあの無理していただかなくても思いっきり聞こえていたようで千尋先輩が遠慮したように声を上げたいや送ってくよはいはあ私は帰ろうなんだか当てられてきたもういいや一つだけ思い出したことがあってレンジを指でちょいちょいと呼ぶねえレンジその小説って読ませてもらえないかな<笑>やだよ<笑>ブーブー<笑>あの
オズオズと声が上がる何だろうとレンジと一緒に目を向けると千尋先輩が真面目な顔でポケットから手帳を差し出した代わりじゃないですけどこれをこれって千尋先輩の日記じゃないんですかそうですけど今のものではありませんそれはよく見れば新しいものではなかったどこか擦り切れて何度も繰り返し読まれ折り目と手垢がついた古い手帳だったレンジが驚いた顔をするもしかして半年前の手帳ですかはいさっきレンジ君に返してもらったものですいいのレンジが気遣うようにはい千尋先輩がはにかんだ表情で答えた私はもう大丈夫です私はもっと大切なものをもらいましたからわかりました断る方が悪いと思い素直に受け取る手帳は何でもない小さなものだったがなぜか重みがある気がしたこれ読んでもいいんですかいいですよお礼ですしお礼可能性の話を昨日しましたけど水木ちゃんがいなかったら今の私とレンジ君はいなかったわけですからえ何がいとこ二人で共に首をかしげてしまうレンジ君と水木ちゃんが話していた電話のことですおおあれか自分で書いておいて納得するやつそんなこともあったが告げた言葉そのものを私は覚えていないでもそれもこの手帳の中にあるんだ美月ちゃん千尋先輩が優しい声で私を呼ぶ好きな人に好きだと言えることは本当にびっくりするくらい幸せなことでしたえ一瞬のろけかとも思ったが違ったあああの泊まりに来た夜の話ですねはい、半年前も今も私は水木ちゃんに助けてもらったり励まされてばかりですだから私からも水木ちゃんに贈り物をさせてくださいあいやそんなのいいですよ遠慮はいりません私と言っても形があるものではないですから千尋先輩が苦笑いを浮かべる私にできる唯一の言葉を伝えたいんです言葉ですかはいそれを贈り物と呼ぶのは不思議な感じだけれども千尋先輩から受け取るものとしては一番ふさわしい気もした多分ほんの少しですがこれからの水木ちゃんの役に立つかもしれない言葉です千尋先輩は一つうなずき静かにしかし力強く告げた夢を叶えるためにはまず夢そのものがないといけないこうなりたいああしたいあれが欲しい自分のために誰かのためにそういう意志思いを抱くことが何よりも大切なんだそうです思いはいとても単純なことですが一番難しいことですそしてその思いを諦めずに
ずっと思い続けるそれが夢を叶える第一歩になるんだそうですそれは誰の言葉なんですか千尋先輩の言い回しに私は問いかけるその言葉はまさにレンジが実践してきたことでありそういう前向きな気持ちを生み出す人を痛みを覚えながら心に思い浮かべた私にとってはレンジ君がくれた言葉で消えない記録としてここにあります彼女は新しい記録となった小説を胸に抱きしめて花開くような笑みを浮かべたそしてそれはかつてクズ秀一さんがレンジ君に送った希望のかけらです2人を見送った私は大慌てでレンジの家へと戻ってきたすみませんまたまた遅くなりましたあ<笑>案の定とんでもなく暗い声がしておばさまがキッチンから出てきたせっかくの料理が全部冷めたお腹かすいたごごめんなさい時計を見ると8時を思いっきり過ぎていたレンジも帰ってこないし集団ボイコット<笑>大人帝国への逆襲7日間戦争ですか<笑>レンジや千尋先輩に会ってみんなで話し込んでいたらつい私は両手を掲げて高三のポーズをとる<笑>冗談だとは分かっているがもしかしたら本気かもしれないのでうかつなことを口にできなかったレンジのことも本人から言わせる方がいいと思ったよよよおばさまが泣き崩れるどうしよう思わず視線をそらしたところでふと今の壁際に置かれていた大きな箱が目についた何ですかあれああ何か水木ちゃんに大きな荷物が届いてたけどすっかり元に戻っておばさまが頬に手を当てる私宛てにお母さんからかな気の早いクリスマスプレゼントかしらね<笑> I her jokes regarding Renji are very weird and I have no justification for them like I can't say a single I can't even make a single sound in their favor But overall, her personality is endearing, I would say. I mean, she acts a little bit、uh, childish, maybe, but I still think she, she can be cute. Hey, Infinity a n How's it going? Yeah. Like when she's sad about things, like she was just now because they didn't come home. <laughs> That was cute. And at the same time, it's cool of her because、uh, another kind of parent would have just, you know, been angered and、uh, yeah, not really listened to, um, to uh, the you know, child's, I don't know, not necessarily reasoning, but you know. I still think she's. She's on the okay side of, of, of parent, if not for the, the jokes. I can't say anything for the jokes. They're just. I, I, I don't get it. I'm.、Uh, yeah, let's move on. Eh? Obasama no kotoba ni, ni fuda o mir. Ego desu ra nai alphabeto no naka de, futatsu no namae dake ga. ローマ字表記で見て取れた久世秀一と葉山瑞希それが何か分かったような気がする私は厳重に梱包されていた包みを解き予想通りのものを目にしたそれ Sorry. <laughs> scroll too fast. いつ、okay. 私 There we go. それってバイオリンいつか見たバイオリン
それが私の元へメッセージカードが1枚ケースの上に載っていた読めない私はそれをおばさまに渡す彼女はざっとそれを眺めていぶかしげに目を細めた支障なしただし日々の扱いが良くないようなので注意されたし物が物だけに早めに送り返しておくが送り返す先が君でないことの意味を尋ねてもよいのかあとは指針 Oh yeah remind me which one was it which, which route did you do ドイツ語ね、工房の人かしら。住所間違いで届いたわけじゃないんだ。どうしてなのかと、おばさんは言外に問う。She has a questionable relationship? What do you mean? Which relationship do you mean? 私は答えずケースを開けた何百年も大切にされてきたバイオリンの上にもう一枚のカードが添えられていた思わず目頭が熱くなったそれは日本語でたった一言世界で一番綺麗な一言だった。その後、レンジが帰ってきて、大にぎわいで拍手喝采でお祭り騒ぎの後のこと。You mean with k u z a s a n I just want to know who you meant by previous protagonist. If you mean Kuze san, I don't know if they had anything in the past, but Uh, I feel like in the present, while they do express a certain familiarity and are quite comfortable making weird, maybe flirtatious jokes、uh, in the presence of each other, I also believe the, the boundaries there are quite drawn. Like, at least from when Kuze san was, when we were re reading things from his perspective and he was talking about her,、uh, I felt a certain sense of like respecting and also. Um, always thinking about what she would say and what she would think.、Um, so, from that point of view, even though the humor may be a little bit weird, and I have again no justification for the humor, I'm <laughs> maybe too serious of a person、uh, on the one hand, and on the other, there might just be something specific here that I just, I just can't wrap my head around. Uh, other than that, I do feel like、uh, there are boundaries there that. Each of them are aware of and they're being respected. That's all. Her clownish behavior doesn't fit the serious atmosphere of the story. I mean, maybe, you know, just maybe, this kind of clownish characters are there with the purpose of like relieving a little bit of the tension through humor. <laughs> It's just. Their particular choice of humor doesn't really work for us, so we're left wondering what the heck. <laughs> I, I think that's kind of the, the case, maybe. And even if they did have something to do in the past,、uh, in all of the interactions that we've seen, I'm,、uh, all I can conclude from them、uh, is that they're familiar with each other, they're comfortable making weird jokes about each other. But there are some very clear lines drawn there that none of them would cross. So, yeah. From that point of view, I think it's more or less okay. The only questionable thing that remains is the humor.、Um, as for her as a parent,、um, I, I mean, we, we haven't seen that much, and we're mostly focused on the kids、uh, in the story. 
but I think it's uh, a really healthy attitude of her towards Renju's relationship of like, it's his life. He has to live it and he has to go through his own hardships. Because that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> like a lot of uh, parents just try to coddle their children and protect them. And sure, when they're young, you do protect them. But at some point, you gotta let them make their own choices and stumble in their own way and learn from their own mistakes. Because otherwise you're not teaching them how to live, you're just uh, keeping them in a protective bubble uh, that further down the line is not going to serve them well. So from that uh, perspective, I, I, I respect her attitude. <laughs> Miss Iributus, yes, is really nice. Make sure you get the full good ending about that in, in Tomoyo's route as well. Wait, I need to allow this because you use the word that Automod is like, ooh, we're kind of, mm, what is that word? <laughs> Apparently Automod has not uh, studied the, uh, the phases of a story. Yes, uh, Automod needs a little bit of uh, culture in its life. <laughs> uh. いつかのレンジのように月明かりだけの部屋で目が悪くなるかと思ったけどでもそうやって読んでいたかった始まりのページには綺麗な綺麗な丸い字で From the me of yesterday to the me of today. 昨日の私から今日の私へ I thought I had to read it because she wasn't saying anything. それは何でもない日常から始まって、レンジと出会い、笑って、泣いて、また笑って、また泣いて、一人でいることの寂しさと、二人でいることの恐れが綴られていた。一つ一つの欠片だ。忘れていようとも絶対どこかにそれは残っている心に体に誰かの思いにこの世界に傷のように愛おしく途中千尋先輩と久世さんが一緒に歩いている場面があった彼は優しくて嫌でもあの日のことを思い出してしまうそこで気づいてしまう私は泣きそうになっていた鼻がツンとするどうしてかあの日から私は涙もろくなっている部屋の隅に置いたバイオリンに目をやる久世さんは今穏やかに眠れ
Hmm. He did mention something about her modeling it or whatever. I think. Or maybe my memories are getting confused. Amamiya. Yuko san.赤い世界私はぼんやりと近くを覚醒させる自分の体が世界に溶けて混ざっている手であろう箇所を見ようとするがそもそも視覚となるべき眼球の位置も定まらなかったこれは夢か<笑> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. All I'm saying is that I'm sensing a, a, a sort of mutual respect there. And even though there's like odd things like the humor and maybe even this thing. Um... It seems like it's accepted by the characters. So who am I to start judging? As long as they are not expressing any sort of... Uh, issue uh, about that like i guess i don't know whatever floats your boat man and woman <clears throat> nothing changed <laughs> i guess I don't know, it's just that there, there's just something at the core of this conversation that I can't really put my finger on. That while it is perfectly alright for us to not be okay with those things, at the same time I feel like we're being a bit too harsh on her. I just... It's hard for me to identify the, um, the limits and the lines because it's also muddied by the, the like, yeah, obviously the humor and, and the, the part with the uniforms that are a little bit out there um at the same time i would prefer not to dwell on it uh, because the focus of the story is the is the stories of the kids not her necessarily she's just a supporting character and i feel like in in her key moments she does incredibly well so i can respect her for that and be a little bit eh, i don't really get that other thing but i can still live my life past it <laughs> that's all <laughs> I don't know if that's the proper word, but thank you. Tokukara Kodomono Nakigoegasta Furue Tayu Samui Hidata Samui Sumari Fuyuda Sorenara Kokua Kyokaida. じゃあ、私に何か用があるんですか優しい声がした。ノイズが混じって誰への呼びかけかわからなかった。だから視点である私も振り返る。祭壇の前で天宮優子さんが小さな女の子と向かい合っていた。いや、身長が違うから優子さんは前かがみ。女の子は不器用な顔をしていて微笑ましい光景だと思ったが、優子が泥棒しないか見張ってるの。全然微笑ましくなかった。I feel like Clinton was being a little bit jokey with that. <laughs> but then Beatrice just covers. <laughs> Thank you. You're too kind, guys. なんでもいいですけど、せめてお姉ちゃんとか呼んでもらえないでしょうか。いや、とても可愛げのない子だ。ゆうこさんは困ったように視線を外す。ゆうこ、ちょっとだけ静かにしててね。彼女は十字架を
いるような予感はしていたけどやっぱりいたこんにちは日村さんこんにちは手を挙げかけて彼は不思議そうに私の姿を見つめた今日はなんか雰囲気が違うねまた制服だし私の手元にある花束に目をやって日村さんがつぶやく俺へのプレゼント<笑>違いますよ何かいつもと違いますか私うんキリッとしてるような<笑>いつもキリッとしてますよ何か吹っ切れたのかな吹っ切りに来たのかもしれないですけどそのために教会に来たのだ制服を着ることに少しだけ抵抗があったけれどこれ以外にふさわしい服を持ってきていなかったから今日は別に日村さんに用があったんじゃないんですただこれを捧げたくて私は花束を持ち上げて匂いを嗅ぐ洗練された香り本当は25日の方がいいんですけどここをその日は埋まってそうなので誰のためにって聞いていいのかな懺悔になりますけどそれでもいいんですか私は小さく笑う神父じゃないけどないいさそれですっきりするならでは聞いてくださいちょっと長い話かもしれませんがうんどこから話せばいいかな私は純白の花を胸に抱くステンドグラスから差し込む光に目を細める懐かしいな私はかつてこの教会に住んでいたことがありましたああ日村さんは驚きというより納得したというつぶやきを漏らすいつか養子だということは知っていると言ってましたねやっぱり今日は違うな Your recognition is honor is made Squid, thank you so much for the 36 months Man It's been three years, well three years and a half I guess no, some time there has been accumulated in between the subs Man, the way time passes Crazy, thank you so much, appreciate it. <clears throat> also, good morning. Hope things are going all right. So, Yoshi that the key done at all. Kono Kyoka, you're now a meter to Kino Fuinki de Anosets in Itachi da. A whole lot of minutes, yes. Kuzewa Kizui de Nai Bitae datana. Eh, Kizuka in the Nai Fudan no Kuchova. ありがたかった日村さんは本物の神父さんのように日々に通じているようだだから改めて話そうと思った<笑>ずっと蓋を閉じていたオルゴールを開くようにこれは友達も先輩方もおばさまもレンジもお母さんも誰も知らない昔話です私は生まれつき家族がいなかったわけではないんですおぼろげにですがそういうものがあったことを覚えています仲の良い家族だったと思います日村さんの静かな視線を受けて私はゆっくりと首を振る<笑> Good one, Beatrice. いえ私がそう思いたいだけかもしれません。何かはあったのでしょう。今思えば、家の中に笑い声があったことを覚えていないんです。私の家族が失われたのは、震災ではありません。彼が少しだけ反応した。そう。音羽では勘違いされやすいけれど。そうではないのだある夏の日遊園地に行ったんですその日はなぜか両親が優しくて笑っていて暑くてみんなでソフトクリームを食べて
美味しかった<笑>実は食べ物のことしか覚えてないんですよね<笑>私は滑稽だと思ったが頭をかくソフトクリームは家族の味日村さんは今度は反応せずただ静かに私の言葉を待っていたその帰り道に車が海に落ちて両親は死にました事故でいいえ白い花が揺れる多分心中しようとしたんです I see I did not remember that at all I have no idea if that's in the anime 私はその直前に車内で母親に首を絞められました Yeah <laughs> Whenever she mentioned ice cream in the past as well it would, always, it would always make me think of the ice cream in my fridge and be like I know what I'm doing after stream <laughs> But unfortunately, here it's like in a, in a sad context, and at the same time, it's interesting. It puts it somehow into perspective that even now, ice cream still makes her happy. That's cool, actually. Yes, I know. It's <laughs> let's 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 listen to the rest of the story. But I just wanted to note on like how cool it is of Mizuki. To be still so enamored with、uh, with ice cream and make it a beautiful, happy thing, even though it kind of marks that day in her memory as well. It just it just makes her awesome. Nani ga nanda ka wakara nai mama. Kurushku te. Sore demo hahaoya ga nai te iru no ga fushigi de kanashikatta. Hisashiburi ni kazoku minna ga waratte ita no ni. よく、そこで私を殺すことができなくて。だから車で海に飛び込むなんて方法を取ったんだと思います。開いていた窓から海の水が流れ込んできましたが、それが終わってしまうと、世界はとても静かになりました。夏の海水は暖かいのに冷た
Don't know if that's the best way to approach it. Oh. I think she would prefer for him to recognize her for just who she is, not necessarily because she has some trauma in her past. Does she need to have trauma to be recognized for who she is and for her to actually empathize with his struggle? I don't think so. It's not a poker game. <笑>本当に気づいて。<笑>私はむしろ逆に可能性でありたいんです。抱えた花に負けないように笑顔を浮かべる。可能性はい。昆虫証明って言葉ばっかりのこの世界で、それでも笑顔を浮かべ続けていられる可能性。環境や才能や時代じ
お父さんとお母さんと友達一人一人に自分を認めてもらって傷ついても立ち上がる人たちを見てきただから登場じゃなくて私は久世秀一さんの強さに惹かれたんです私は死ぬことの怖さを知っているからその教会に立ってあんなに他人のことばかり考えた笑い方ができる人はとてもまぶしくて恋い焦がれたそれは盲言だそうかもしれませんがやっぱりみんな願っていますよこんなの絵本とか少女漫画にだって書いてあるんですから大人が気づかないはずないんです少女漫画はい今度おすすめのものをお貸ししましょうか<笑>ヒロ先輩の本がどこかカバンの中に入っているはずだったしいやいい少女漫画だと日村さんは顔を押さえて首を振ったどうも笑っているらしいが泣いているようにも見えた私はどうしたらいいのだろう花束を見下ろしてしまうえー、っともしこれが傷ならまあそう呼べなくはないのかなああすまない落ち着いたのか唇を曲げて日村さんが顔を上げたそうかいそうかいクゼのやつも見誤っていたんだえ君は彼女とは似て非なる最悪だななぜか楽しげにそれとなんだかけなされてますか私たまたま表面的に似てるだけで完全に逆じゃないかあの君何しにここに来たの懺悔必要ないんじゃないい,いえそうですね懺悔の途中というか明らかに脱線していたようなうん、ゲッティオッシュとプレイビアのストリーム、オールドヴィアンズ、アイプレイトフォンドゥエンエフトンエトンストリーム。アイ、デルズオンリーワンドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエルドゥエそう、もし戻ってきたら、それは終わりです。ただ、それは私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、There is no way to buy it legally. Like, I, from what I know, there is no English or like, yeah, there is no proper release in the West. I just have to pirate it. So I wouldn't want to do that. I would want to legitimately play the things I play on stream. And yes, of course, the, the sexy content does not help either. <laughs> so. Yeah, that is、uh, my own endeavor. <laughs> But yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't stream that. I would buy it in an instant if it was available, by the way. Like, I would throw my money at it. It just isn't. They decided not to do that. So, every once in a while, I just Google how to, you know, is there a, a, a release <laughs> of it for us plebs in the West? Every, like, I don't know, couple of months or so, half a year or so, I start Googling it and go down the same rabbit holes of really old Reddit threads of people saying, nah, they have no interest in it. And I'm like, yeah, well, sucks. <laughs> Maybe there is a patch, but I, I would like to buy it. Yeah. Oh well. ちょっといい加減にこの花置いてきてもいいですかね構わないけどそこでしますから
ついてきてください何を今日の日村さんは頭が回っていないのかもしれないどうしたのだろう私は小首をかしげていっただから今までの葵いたちでこれからが本当の懺悔ですよあー、um, I forget which patch it was it a hundred percent had the sexy stuff in it <laughs> Because I read it. <laughs> so,、uh, yeah, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> I think maybe it had the English translation of. And things were patched. I have no idea exactly which, which patch it was, but. Yep. Gotta transfer that magical power. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, in all of those years of、uh, like millennia of, of、uh, not millennia, what am I saying?、Um, in all those thousands of years of、uh, magical you know, powers being handed down to, from generation to generation, they haven't found another way to do it. No, it, it has to be that <laughs> for the sake of the plot. Yes, Unlimited Blade Works is, uh, is uh, pretty, pretty dope. <sighs> okay, let's see her true confession now. Ooh, we get the actual story. The strong wind was blowing me away. The dark and dark world of the world was dead. The dark and dark world was dead. The dark and dark world was dead. Let's go to the ground. 遅れて出てきた日村さんが背中から声をかけてくる。い,いえ、ここなんです。ここ花がすぐにしおれてしまいそうですね。私は。教会のすぐ前の道路を見渡した。What? What? Skin is really. I'm sorry, I'm so confused. What are you talking about? <laughs> Ah, skin just like in general. The way it's made and the way it works. I gotcha, I gotcha. Yes. <laughs> I gotcha, I gotcha. They are localizing one of the other VNs in the Fate universe. There's so many things sprouting up like just mushrooms after the rain in the Fate universe. I just I couldn't be bothered to keep up. <laughs> Although I do have this vague、uh, bit of information floating in my mind somewhere, kind of lost without a context, but I feel like there's one that's kind of located in Romania or something. And it might be on Netflix, the anime, and I might want to check it out. I think something or something, something related there.、Uh, but more than that, I just, I, it's overwhelming. I wouldn't want to, to jump into it. I would be perfectly fine if one day I'll be like, yes, I read the entire、uh, Roots of Fate and then I just, I, I'm done with this chapter in my life. Let's move on to other stories that I want to explore and for which I don't really have the time. I've seen Tsukihime, actually. Mahotsukai no Yoru.、Uh, that one I don't. I, it doesn't sound familiar. Oh, yeah, this. Okay. 
Okay, I understand what you mean by the same the same uh, universe. Just like Tsukihime it's, is its own story, but it's kind of like, okay. Okay, that's good to keep in mind. Thank you so much. Might be an interesting uh, thing uh, to put down on the on the backlog for for the future. Hmm. I will bookmark this actually. There we go. All right, let's keep going with this because I'm really curious uh, how things are gonna be revealed. I I'm oh man. Ah. Need to take a deep breath. I'm really curious for you's reaction here. Chigaimasu. <laughs> Okay, his reaction... Right, his reaction was to go all gloomy and dark. Oh... Okay, okay. Man. I gotta take a moment to appreciate the fact that we're getting some uh, narration from uh, Yu's perspective because I love his voice. His voice just melts me inside. I'm like, yes, please keep going. Please keep talking. <laughs> but yeah, the, the situation is kind of sad too. <laughs> どうすればいいのかわからなくて寂しいということ悲しいということ流れていく時の中では切ない気持ちだけがただ積み重なっていってそれを崩すことがどうしてもできない俺にはできない Right, so we're jumping directly into this story. Interesting. It's kind of intertwined then. <clears throat> I left the library after finishing my work. This is the first time I get to read something today, <laughs> by the way. I've been streaming for <laughs> almost an hour and a half. <laughs> it's all been exposition from the characters. Okay. Um, silence filled the hallway. Not a person could be seen. There were supposed to be students doing club activities. Out of all days, why was the day the quiet one? My own footsteps were fiercely audible. Sunlight flooded the hallway. Though it was evening, the hot rays wouldn't light up. I had only walked a bit, but my body was already sweating. I changed into my outdoor shoes and went outside. Without even the slightest hint of a breeze, the air around me felt hot, humid, and nauseating. It was unquestionably summer, alright? I couldn't say that I hated summer. Compared to, to the melancholy of winter, I had little reason to complain about this vibrant season. It wasn't something to hate. Come to think of it, that was how I sorted everything in life. Things I hate and things I don't hate. What a healthy way of seeing the world. Or was it? I lifted my eyes to the smoldering sky. The way I wanted to live was... What the... A simple white object twirled and fluttered in the air. It was a paper airplane. At a place near the sky. Mm. Or... Where'd this stupid thing come from? The plane landed neatly at my feet. I kneeled and inspected the handmade aircraft. Even at our age, there were students foolish enough to make something so pointless. 
As I reflected upon the grounded annoyance, my eyes flitted from one window to the next. The culprit may have already fled the scene. Ah. My eyes were suddenly fixated on a solitary girl. She was swinging her legs over the edge of the roof as if she had not a care in the world. What was she doing up there? More importantly, just then, a flood of questions threatened to overtake my brain. Acknowledging my presence, the girl gazed at me from her lofty perch. She looked down, stopped all movement, and smiled at me. A breathtaking panorama revealed itself as I opened the door. From this vantage point, it seemed as though the golden sun was preparing to incinerate the earth. Amid the searing red light was the lone girl in a serene posture. Why are you wearing your winter uniform? I asked her a question, but it wasn't my intention to scold her. What I had originally planned to say somehow left me. The scene before my eyes took my breath away. This was my first time setting foot on the rooftop, so I was surprised that there was no fence or railing to be found. Fuyufuku? The girl raised an eyebrow. Isn't that a winter uniform? Or maybe you didn't know about the uniform change? <laughs> what? She was clearly wearing Ottawa Collegiate's designated winter uniform. The fact that she had apparently made a point of donning gloves made what she said even more bizarre. Um, that's not quite... She made no logical sense. Naturally, who wouldn't after seeing that? Wearing such warm clothes in the middle of summer could only be considered a form of masochism. As she spoke, her hand caressed her sleeve. This isn't an interrogation. Her voice was trailing off, so I decided to cut the conversation short. Perhaps she had scars from a childhood injury. Girls her age wouldn't like to show their scars to anyone. I understood that much. Besides, her winter clothes suited her to a curious degree. Of course, that thought would have, would have to be kept to myself. <laughs> As if, <laughs> I shook my head as I recalled my original intent. You know, you're not supposed to be up here. The door was usually locked, so I had no idea how she managed to get a hold of the key. Great, she was spouting at me. <laughs> I came to warn you, so I'd appreciate it if you didn't change the subject like that. She didn't seem interested in explaining how it was shameful. Just be glad I'm not a teacher. How did you get up here anyway? Accessing the rooftop of Ottawa Collegiate was forbidden. It was natural for most students to forget that there was even a way. As a result, the area was virtually untouched. If you're going to lie, at least come up with a more believable story. You can't see anything at this time of day. Besides, do we even have an, as an astronomy club? I didn't see a telescope or anything of the sort. Dissolved? Just the first year, huh? I had the impression that this girl was much younger than me. Three or four years younger, in fact. I am so confused, though. Isn't this the middle of summer? If this is the middle of summer, how could have the third years graduated just yesterday? Or, oh, 
it's maybe because the third year is not that they graduated, but because it's kind of the year is halfway uh, and they need to study for their exams and so on. Uh, they are no longer going to participate in club activities and so, yeah, they left. Uh, that would make sense, okay. Forgive, uh, <laughs> forgive my <laughs> parenthesis. There's not much you can do if nobody cares. That's life. I uttered those words with total indifference. All this small talk had become so common in my life that I mostly acknowledged things like a drone. Doing so had its pros and cons. そうなんですよ。どうにもならないんです。でも… She spoke that unsettling declaration without the slightest hesitation. Come to think of it, this wasn't something to admit to a random passerby. Whatever, I just came to warn you. Don't sit in such a dangerous place. <laughs> the girl chuckled. Something about the way she did it grated my nerves. I don't really care about what you're doing or how you even got up here. Still, I'd feel guilty if you were to suddenly slip off and kill yourself. Did she actually not understand? I don't want to see anyone die, isn't that obvious? She sounded a bit aggravated. Maybe she realized that I thought uh, of her as reckless. My intuition was most likely correct in this case. She leisurely called out my name. Exactly who are you? She was a fellow student, so it wasn't strange that she knew my name. However, I recognized her voice. This eccentric manner of speaking, along with her warm smile, were somehow familiar, but I couldn't fathom how I knew. Answer the question. She lightly scolded me and shook her head. Why was I so irritated? Some part of me was being drawn to her, yet I felt like I was suffocating. The girl smiled once more. Yuko desu yo. Yuko? Eh, onegai desu kara. Masureta nante iwanai de kudasai ne. Yuko. Watashi wa hitome de wakatta no ni, anata wa sukkari wasurete tara. Mou kanashikute tachi naore nai desu yo. Moshi mo... If you truly have forgotten, speak no more until you have remembered. All of a sudden, a sound reverberated inside my head. You... you're... It was a chime loud enough to hurt my ears. Children were shouting, looking for their precious ones. A church. I was holding back my tears and running towards somewhere, the place where I lost everything. A neighborhood in ruins. I was shifting away rubble, going through the collapsed buildings, calling out someone's name. Then I let out a vicious scream that took everything out of me. Clinging to non-existent hope, was what anyone would do when beaten down by despair. Emotions were running wild because the world had changed in an instant. Life was destroyed for everyone around me. I stopped running for a moment and then I felt something warm touch my hand. My head turned to the side. 
The images of the past faded and I focused on the girl in front of me. Traces of that time were still there. I remember. I, I remember now, Yuko. I didn't want to be thanked. I wanted to forget the past, but for some reason I preserved my memories of her. Yuko. Hi. It's nothing. I shook my head. Then I stepped towards her. Don't make these. They just end up being garbage. I held out the paper airplane and said that to her in the most chitting noise. A chitting tone I could manage. If you took that much care, then hold on to it. She nodded in an affirmation. Wait, what are you talking about? What? <laughs> Yuko looked at me cheerfully. Why? ここは私が一人になれる場所だったのに他人が踏み込んできたからでもあなたなら許しますずっともう一度会いたいと思ってましたから <laughs> Yuko connected her sentences, hoping for a response from me. Wait, what are you saying? I don't need it. A paper airplane could hardly be called a keepsake. Was this supposed to be a joke? It's the one she folded, man. Don't put it down. The hand in which I held the paper airplane trembled a little. Hmm. That definitely didn't sound scornful. She was almost smiling. Why did she say that? Yes. Always. Confirmed. What do you mean? あなたは今でも差し出した手を振り払われた人間の痛みをあなたは今でも知らないままですか。I wondered if she was actually angry. Meanwhile, the world around us felt like it was frozen in time. I couldn't react or move a muscle. なんて冗談ですよ。Her sudden voice broke my trance. The stiff barrier between us suddenly disappeared. <laughs> Her voice was cheerful even though it was a warning. I felt a sudden urge to crash the paper airplane, but I repressed that thought. What a terrible memento. <laughs> a small sigh escaped her lips. I didn't reply to her. Oni-chan. How many years had it been since I was last called that? I never thought it would happen again. The last time I heard it, it stirred something in my heart. Oni-chan. My head was suddenly burning. I tried to slow down my breathing and forget about that memory. Anything but that. I didn't want to remember it. The paper airplane was still in my hand. It was a reminder of reality. My horrific past couldn't be allowed to influence the present. I took a small breath. Everything was okay, I thought to myself. I couldn't break down now. It wouldn't be right. 
Oh, I have work. The sun had almost finished setting. There was no time to be wallowing in self-pity. Yes, I'll leave now. I whispered that and then looked back. A walk was what I needed. Taking some time to reminisce about the past was something that everyone did. The familiar sound of the scudders filled the air as I approached the exit. Summer. I couldn't say I hated it. What is seen in darkness? Ooh. As I entered the classroom, I noticed a small crowd at the back. Sa, yotte ra shai, mite ra shai. A mountain of clothes and other trinkets were littered over two desks. Ima no kisetsu ja pinto konai ka mo shire nai ga kono seta. Son ja sokora no yasumoro ta wake ga chigau. And what makes that one so special? Oya, Himura ja nai ka. Ohayo, ai karazu no butchou zura da na. I see you're entertaining the peanut gallery, <laughs> Kuze. The man in front of me, Shuichi Kuze, waved away the other students, then sat down. Due to some sort of twisted fate, I was currently stuck with this idiot. At least I would only have to put up with him for less than two months. What is it? First off, may I ask why you're running a pawn shop here? Shuichi lightly tapped his desk. Yeah, Tatsutori, Ato, Nigosazu, the Yukara, Hianamono, Stemaku, and the Kedosa. Igai to Imono, I don't know, Dede Kurunde, Sternoa, Osito Motte. I don't know whether to be amazed at you or not. What a shrewd person. He was making a quick buck of his trash. On Nani Homenak demo, Seta no Ichimai Kuraiwa, Tada de Yarte, Oreto, my no Nakadashna. That's the kind of stuff you'd only give to your grandmother or someone you hate. Shuichikuze. <laughs> <laughs> we met during opening ceremonies when we first entered Ottawa Collegiate. I don't remember what started it all, but he was definitely the one who called out to me first. He was a person who always fooled around, socializing with others at every opportunity. Why he kept bothering to talk to me of all people remained a mystery. Ne. I am about to be finally rid of you, so I don't want some cheesy hand-me-down of yours. Nothing faced Shichi at all. Not insults, not jabs. Whether he was thick-headed or a tough guy, I didn't know. Why are you still here anyway? Why? Shichi completed the sale of a suspicious music box as we were talking. You're all set even if you drop out of here. まあ、そうなんだけどさ。なんせいつ戻ってこられるかわからないからな。学校でいろいろと片付けてお金くちゃならないこともあるんだよ。You mean girl stuff? それは最優先で処理した。Shichi quickly brushed aside my snide comment. He was in the double digits when it came to girlfriends, and that only included the ones I knew. I wondered how many girls he went out with during his short stint at Ottawa Collegiate. It'll be scary if one of them chases you halfway around the planet. <laughs> Just cover up your tracks and leave. While you're at it, get yourself killed over there. <laughs> Shuichi was uh, leaving Ottawa Collegiate after only one year to study abroad in a German music school. He didn't look like a virtuoso, but he was indeed an expert violinist. A few weeks after he enrolled, he took his first competition as if it were child's play. The champion even admitted it himself. <laughs> Apparently. While he kept calling me his pal all the time, he didn't invite me to the competition, nor did he ever ask me to watch him play the violin. For what it was worth, I had never heard a single musical note out of him. Mm. What are you so worried about? <laughs> Where exactly are you going? 
He had to tell me, being shy was not his nature. It was probably some city I wouldn't recognize anyway. Even if I did, I wouldn't follow him. Oh, sorry. Besides, I hardly had the social upbringing to appreciate fine music in the first place. Whatever, forget it. Hide all that junk before the teacher sees it. Aye, aye. Himura wa hen na tokoro de majime na no ga ikenai. You should try it for a change. Seriously, I couldn't handle this guy. However, I would only have to deal with him for a little longer. Just a little longer. It was lunchtime, so I left the classroom. Shichi stayed behind to wheel and deal once more. He was excited at the prospect of earning enough money to cover his flight to Germany. I knew that was impossible. Upon further inspection, he did have quality goods, but his prices were quite ordinary. At best, he would rake in enough to pay for a cab ride to the airport. <laughs> if that was his real goal, more power to him. Well, he could do whatever he wanted as long as it didn't involve me. For now, I had to decide how to kill some time. It was too humid to be loitering outside, and I immediately dismissed the idea of staying in the classroom with Shuichi. The library was it then. I reluctantly stopped moving. <laughs> I do that sometimes. My fault. I did see her in front of me, but I intended to pass by without talking to her. Also a habit. <laughs> so what if it was? Yuko changed her tone and smiled. Perfect. Wait, what are you doing here in the first place? This floor only had second year classrooms. ね、ディグミでフリーマーケットやってるって聞いたもので、ま、先輩は何組なんですか？ディ。なら、ご存知ですよね。掘り出し物もあるっていうので、ちらっと覗きに行こうかなって。二年生の教室に一人で行くのも
And why would I do that? Watashi to Himura Senpai ga o hanashi suru no ni riyu ga hitsuyo nan desu ka? I thought we did. Yuko needed someone around to correct her presumptions. We're going back when the bell rings. No ifs or buts. I scowled at her and lowered my body. Yuko moved up. Hey. Hi. You're too close. Back off, okay? What was she thinking, sitting close enough for our arms to be pressed against each other? So, that's not what I was thinking. It's not that I was bad around them. <laughs> she giggled to herself. I wasn't bad around girls as a whole. Just her. Yuko, you said you were in the astronomy club. I shifted my sitting position a bit. Then why did you still have the roof key? Didn't they take it back? Yugo smiled and took out the key. He made a duplicate, huh? それが部内で代々受け継がれてきてですね。ハイブ置きに最後の部員である私が頂戴したというわけです。じゃんじゃん。This <laughs> wasn't amusing. 伝統が終わっちゃうのは残念ですけどね。部活に誰かに渡すわけにもいきませんし。I suppose you wouldn't be expelled if anyone found out, but I doubt they'd let you off scot free. Not really. I plan to ride the system. That's right. I asserted myself. Getting caught up in trouble was not only a waste of time, it was idiotic. No. <laughs> oh, her face, no. The key is the main, true main character of the novel, yes. Well, now we know where you had it from. <laughs> Yuko brought her hand up to her eye and feigned wiping a tear. Ah, she was just like Shuichi, impossible to actually make upset. <laughs> okay, okay, enough with the hyperbole. Her tone changed. So whiny. <laughs> what a typical question. After all these years, of course, that would be the first thing to ask. Not much, really. I stayed there until about a year ago. Then there was an opening at Ottawa Collegiate, so I took the opportunity. That's it. There weren't any crazy old men who wanted to adopt me. I didn't think anything of it. The country was developed, but people only cared about using their wealth to support themselves and their family. The tuition? I quickly predicted her question. Being a private establishment, Ottawa Collegiate set the bar for extravagant tuition fees. A youth from nowhere would have little chance of ever paying it off. I got a scholarship. People with the highest grades get it. No idea about the rest. To qualify for the scholarship in the first place, I had to nearly ace every category in the entrance exam. At least that's what I assumed. I had to maintain my status as one of the top students in the school. The scholarship would not renew if my average didn't meet a certain threshold. That's why I couldn't afford to waste time and engage in frivolous activities. Well, at least I'm doing my part in contributing to society. <laughs> 
I stood up. The townscape spread out beyond the rooftop. It was dazzling. Every bit of Ottawa was touched by this exotic spectacle. But I knew. I knew what this beauty was masking underneath. Yuko? Hi. Things are different from before. <sighs> she stood up and came to my side. Life, everything, it has all changed. Let me make this clear. I cleared my throat. Stay away from me. <gasps> Yuka and I were together for less than half a, a year back when we were children. We lived in an orphanage set up by the church. Many people lost their parents in the great disaster. Yuko and I were among them. One day, someone adopted Yuko while I remained behind. We didn't know each other beyond that insignificant time. That was all it was. Harsh, but get over it. Senpai, ano? Goodbye. I turned my back to her. This was how it should be. Dealing with the past wasn't amusing to me at all. If she were around, the past would haunt me even if I tried to block it out. I had to let it all go. Now then, the womanizer was probably still doing business in the classroom. I looked down at my watch. The classes were about to resume, so it would be best to head back. <laughs> I almost fell down the stairs. <laughs> that voice was so sudden. I hid my impatience and glared at the source of the voice. It was Akira Amamiya, the fine arts teacher. Of all people, it just had to be him. If he were to find out, I would be in serious trouble. I tried to talk my way out of it. Um, I tried to go up there, but it was locked. No entry, huh? Eh, Okujo de Tachiri Kishinanda. So do I see an What? That's it? He wasn't going to reprimand me? Yeah. Himura Kuma Okujo de Moromo in Yukeriona type Janaito Motte Tandere. So I got that Tadakedaya. It seemed that Mr. Amamiya didn't care too much about reinforcing school regulations. He's hot, probably evil. <laughs> Beatrice with the instinct kicking right in. <laughs> I mean, notice his name too. So. so much for worrying. I'm not the kind of person you think I am. I see. I shrugged. Yes, yes. I replied immediately. I was wary of repeating this dialogue so many times. It all started one year ago. Mr. Amamiya was unusually interested in the landscape painting I did in class. He went ahead and entered it in a contest for me, which I surprisingly won. There wasn't a price of any sort, so I didn't care at all. Mr. Amamiya was also the advisor for the art club. He was so persistent in getting me to join that the painting seemed like a curse. I told you already, I have no interest in art. Nisa! Yuko was quietly coming down the stairs. She had a surprised look on her face. Nisa? Not Oni-chan, but Ni-san. Huh? Mr. Amamiya just called her Yuko without any honorifics. That was different from how he addressed everyone else. Could it be... Yuko, what was your last name again? Huh? What? <laughs> Now I understood. 
Yuko was taken in by a couple whom were distant relatives. The couple's own child had to be this teacher, Akira Amamiya. In other words, Yuko was Mr. Amamiya's legal sister. Wow. The world couldn't have a worse combination of siblings. Himura-kun が絶望的な顔つきで何か失礼なことをつぶやいているんだが、ゆうこ、どういうことだと思うその人、昔から少し大げさなところがあるんですよ。she was the worst. おっといけない。ゆうことひむらくんのただならない関係は興味あるが、次の機会に回すか。There won't be a next time. I couldn't stand either of them. あ、私も教室に戻らないと。じゃ、学生諸君、きっちり勉学に励むようにね。At least I was able to escape the grip of both Amamiya's. Maybe I should have stayed with Shuichi after all. Hello. I greeted the customer who just walked in. Multiple orders were precariously placed on my hands. The place was packed and it wasn't even the, the dinner rush yet. This has been my part-time job for just over a year. I started right after I entered Ottawa Collegiate. I returned to the counter after dealing with the current task. Are you ready to order? The amount of customers didn't affect my hourly pay, so I preferred only enough to keep uh, the place running. But the reality was different. Nevertheless, this was a terrible day. Spaghetti and iced tea is not everything. Despite all of Shuichi's antiques, I had a relatively uneventful school life. Now there was this business with Yuko and her brother. A sinking feeling f filled me inside. Dark clouds seemed to be looming in my future. Phew. I sighed as work came to a close. It was a hectic schedule. My job took place right after school. Then I had to return home, have a light dinner, and study for the rest of the night. Each day was like this. Day after day with no substitutions. It was my only hope to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Everything else had to be blocked out. Nothing could faze me, not even the past. I stopped walking and looked up at the sky. She mentioned the astronomy club. Did she have any interest in the stars when we were at the orphanage? I shook my head. There was no way I could remember such a trifling detail. I didn't even remember her original surname, Yuko. Many children who had lost their families were taken in by the church. There were plenty of children who were younger than me, yet Yuko was the only one to call me Onichan. I thought she was nothing more than a pampered girl. Though I tried to tell her off, she kept talking to me. It reminded me of her. Not in appearance, but in her nature. The starry sky was uh, the only constant in the world. That night, you couldn't see it. Smoke and flames burned everything into cinder. Nothing else was in my field of vision. I had to protect her, even if it meant sacrificing my own aspirations. Yuko Amamiya always reminded me of her. That was why I needed Yuko out of my life. Yuko had grown to be a beautiful girl as much as I hated to admit it. If the earthquake hadn't happened, she would have been as beautiful as Yuko. Damn it. What were you thinking, you Himura? You decided to throw away your past long ago. Everything was supposed to be left behind as ash. That night should have been forgotten. If Yuko were to keep chasing me, it would have I would have to dodge her advances no matter how much she insisted. Alright, let's do a little bit more of this red watch. I entered the classroom at the usual time. This time, however, there wasn't a bazaar at the back. The idiot in charge hadn't appeared yet. <laughs> He's late as always. I muttered under my breath as I headed towards my seat. At least there would be a moment of peace in the meantime. I noticed something strange as I laid my bag. What was this? On the edge of my desk uh, were some chicken scratches written in red ink. 
There was no need to analyze the handwriting. Only one person I knew would write on a desk instead of a piece of paper. Hmm. The messenger wasn't here. Oh well. It wasn't much of a deal, but confirmation would have been nice. Class was uneventful. Himura! What else? It was my job that allowed me to live by myself. Even though tuition was free, I still needed money for food and rent. I have other business before work, but... And even if it, I didn't, I still wouldn't want to hang out with you. his <laughs> face. <laughs> We were never friends in the first place. I stood up. Just wait. What? Yo, te, maybe she's a woman. Huh? Katabuts no Himura kun ni mo toto steady ga? Datta ra shoukai shite kure. Tsui de ni sono kono tomodachi o ore ni shoukai shite kure. Didn't he just end all his relationships? Oh, nanda yo. Koko wa bokezu ni majime ni. You're right. It's about a girl, <laughs> but it's her. Shuichi immediately lost interest. Even he knew that the person I was talking about... Uh, sorry, that the person I was about to see was a handful. He and her were similar in that way. The cicadas could be faintly heard from outside. Summer arrived earlier than usual. The temperature was noticeably increasing. Shuichi mentioned it a while back. The warm temperature was something to be happy about. I wasn't concerned with the second half of what you just said. I heard that the warmer it gets, the more relaxed everyone becomes. However, I didn't have much extra time to relax. The art room. It was a place I tried to avoid at all costs. Hopefully, uh, Mr. Amamiya wasn't around. I opened the door and took one step inside. Instead of answering her, I rubbed my eyes. Maybe I was tired and seeing a hallucination, but this was definitely reality. Nagi Hirono. She was the girl who wrote on my desk, and she was without a shred of clothing. <laughs> Her skin was as white as snow, even in the tint of the golden summer. I saw her tender mounds, the beautiful curve of her spine, and below that, I shook my head and looked up. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Put on some clothes, now! <laughs> Between you and Kuze, I have no idea what goes in the minds of people who are into the arts. After a short dispute, Nagi finally put on some clothes. Both of you act like idiots. Huh? Why doesn't her mouth move? It trips me up now. <laughs> Go to rear art school if you want to do that. No, one's, no one here is stupid enough to volunteer as a model. You shouldn't just act on impulse. I knew she was a woman with some crazy artistic ambitions, but I didn't realize she was this messed up. Where did she get that full-length mirror anyway? Maybe they didn't want to deal with her reflection having to talk too, so they decided we're just not gonna make her mouth move here. Nagi. <laughs> uh, Beatrice resonates with her. Okay. Ooh. Water is good. Taite no gakawa, jigazo kaku mono dashina. Nagi. Oh? 
If you're going to do that, do so in the privacy of your home. Few people would visit the, this room at this time. I also heard that the art club was mostly composed of members on paper. Nagia was the only one who would actually show up. However, the probability of someone seeing her was not entirely zero. You wouldn't be embarrassed if someone saw you like that? She made a sour face. Nagi was confirmed to be female, but she referred to herself with the male pronoun, Boku. When I asked her about it, she said that the neutral pronoun, Watashi, was three syllables, which according to her was too long. Ah yes, efficiency. <laughs> it wasn't a well understood reason. She's lewd in a cool way. Yeah, she has her own things. But isn't it cool we get to see Nagi? By the way, if, if this is lost on anyone, uh, maybe if Clinton is also watching who has trouble with names, uh, she is uh, Hiro's older sister. Hiro being the manga guy. Uh. <sighs> I'm not your lover. Yeah, I see. <laughs> what Nagi said didn't seem to have any logic behind it. It was a rule that only she could understand um, whatever she herself said. Uh, what was it you wanted to see me about? Art room after school. That was the message written on my desk. The one who wrote it never showed her face in class. Nagi only showed up whenever she felt like it. That doodle was yours, right? Again? She smiled. <laughs> Nagi Hirono, like Shuichi Kuze, had been in the same class as me ever since I entered Ottawa Collegiate. Our student numbers were close together, so according to protocol, we sat as neighbors in class. Why were we still together was a question I couldn't answer. That's good. Nagi was happy with her bag crammed with art supplies. So when will you finally be able to do this on your own? What did she want me to ask then? The one who's strange is you. Not being able to shop alone at this age was not only unusual but abnormal. Nagi was a little eccentric so having few friends, the one who got saddled with all this was usually me. When it came to buying food, she forced her younger brother to accompany her to the supermarket. <laughs> No, that's fine. Actually, I'd want her to promise to never shop with me again. That would be better than anything she could give me, but of course, I had to keep dreaming. Oh, that's It probably wasn't. I see. Maggie's father was a renowned artist. The gifts were tokens of adulation. What a waste. So no, I can't. The problem wasn't the story. I simply hated receiving anything for free. I was adamant about it. After I left the orphanage, I vowed to earn everything with my bare hands. That vow had to be preserved for my own benefit. Nagi appeared to tolerate my answers. <laughs> If you say so. After everything Shuichi did to reduce his luggage. <laughs> you ship her with you. <laughs> I got you. I can see that. I can see why, why you would like her. 
Uh, well, no point in intervening. At the very least, it would be an amusing sight. Sure. I set down the bags I was carrying. At least Nagi had a bit of con conscience. I thought I would have to take her all the way home and risk being late for work. How about you appreciate what I just did instead of acting smart? If I were that type of person, I have done something to you in the art room. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Nagi was pretty. However, I couldn't see her as a woman. But it wasn't just her. All my life, I hardly had any interest in the opposite sex. Maybe it was better that way. Nagi? Hmm? What do you know about Mr. Amamiya? Well, that's a bold assumption. That's not it. <laughs> she jumped to conclusions too quickly, or maybe her head was messed up. Just answer my question. You wanted to thank me, so this is what I want. <sighs> Nagi shifted one of the bags with her foot. She had to know something about him. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> I was foolish to have hoped. He is an art teacher, but he doesn't draw or paint anything? I guess. That's encouraging. <laughs> Creepy. That was hardly the information I wanted. I already knew that. So <laughs> <laughs> Nagi started to turn around but stopped halfway. What? Aren't you going home? Huh? さっきから気になってたんだ。放置しておいてもいいが、僕の買い物に付き合った帰りに君に何かあるとちょっとだけ寝覚めが悪くなる。What are you talking about? I looked around. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Wait, wait, did I miss something? No, it's just the sky. And then you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> A cheerful face popped out from behind one of the buildings. This This isn't the time to be making jokes. Efficiency, even in her own name. Okay. Nagi interrupted Yuko and introduced herself. え、そうですね。Nagi-san ですか。私は天宮優子です。Nagi's sentences weren't connecting at all. She walked away with her bags in tow. She came right back. She set down her bags and pulled out a small sketchbook. Didn't you listen to what I said earlier? I couldn't accept anything, even something this insignificant. What? <laughs> the door to the art room opened. A nude girl was sitting on a chair. A lone man walked in! 
Uh, got some papers to fill? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just gonna finish in a couple minutes, just waiting for the scene to end. So you're not gonna miss much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, take care. Good luck with everything. Bye-bye. Thanks for being around. No one else was around. Thank you. <laughs> Not exactly. It was the result of succumbing to evil intentions. <clears throat> Nagi then walked away. Finally. And now... I glared at the remaining girl. <laughs> right. Okay. We're shifting to something else. I have a consumed breakfast. Now I'm stronger than ever before. Yeah! Cool. Hope you had something delicious. Yeah, I think this is a good moment to make a save. And... <laughs> we'll keep going from here. There we are. And there we are over here. Blah. Ah! Ah, stretch. Over easy eggs and toast. A simple meal, but a kingly one. Ah, yes. Hell yes. I think I'm gonna make myself some eggs tomorrow morning as well. I have a very long day. Not necessarily stressful, but long day ahead of me tomorrow. So I'm gonna treat myself to some echoes in the morning. Can't wait. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Beatrice is chiming in too. <laughs> yes, it's it's me. Right, I didn't expect to jump into Yuko's story so soon. I I expected that in in fashion in like in similar fashion to the others, we would just see one through and then jump to the other. Apparently, they're intertwining a little bit here, and that makes sense because uh, we would need the context of Yuko's story to kind of wrap uh, um, Mizuki's story up as well. So yeah. <laughs> It's alright, Squid. Whenever I switch to the screen, I promise I think of you, so you are invoked in spirit and the big Nezumi duty is fulfilled, at least in my heart. So, it's fine. <laughs> I relieve you of your duties. You are... <laughs> you are cool, you're cool. Right. Um, I'm not sure if, if I should... Huh. I'm a little bit... Um... Uh, what's the word? Hey, Fury! <laughs> it's so nice to see you at the end. <laughs> uh, good night, Beatrice, if you're stepping down. Uh, I just wanted to say one quick thing. Uh, I'm unsure if it's appropriate or not, but just to be absolutely 100% sure that um, everyone is alright and on board with what uh, is going to transpire in the story. Uh, at the same time, I don't know exactly how much of it is going to be there, since I only have the knowledge from the anime, but I need... Just to have my conscience clear, to issue like a little bit of a trigger warning regarding abuse. Uh, there's gonna be some not nice parts moving forward, I would expect at least. Uh, so just from that point of view, if um, yeah, it ever makes you feel uncomfortable or you know it um, conjures up uh, things that are difficult to deal with within you, you can just feel free to stop. And be like, okay, this is not good. Right. You're gonna set a bot to come here. <laughs> Every stream day and preemptively do it. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I appreciate the thoughts, good. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So for now, uh, we, we end here this week. Uh, can't, uh, can't wait to keep going. It's uh, really nice to see the characters. I like having uh, you as a narrator, but I miss his voice so much. <laughs> So, yeah. I mean, we'll get to hear it again in some point, I would expect, by the end of the of the novel. So, we're cool, we're cool, everything is alright. Thanks for, for joining, guys. Thank, guys, thank you so much for uh, the lovely chats as usual. Take care of yourself, eat nutritious and delicious food, have a good weekend, and I will see you again um, with visual novels on Tuesday, but we're still gonna have an Overwatch stream on Monday. Take care and until next time, bye bye.